to the our new senator from Georgia, Senator and Reverend Warnock. Floor is yours. Thank you so very much, Chairman Byer. A Bureau of Labor Statistics study found that working women, particularly women of color, have been disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic, a pandemic that is now being called a, a she session as more than 11 million women lost their jobs and accounted for 55% of all job losses in April. Even in my home state of Georgia, we have seen increased job loss among women, with women filing 15% more in unemployment claims than men between April and November of 2020. Further, state budget cuts and furloughs have disproportionately impacted women. This disparity will cause long-term damage and have consequences beyond our economy, spilling into housing, instability, food insecurity, and the well-being of our children. This she session, combined with the already large racial wage gap that black and brown women suffer from a double gap, which you've written about, uh, Dr. Holder, uh, has proven disastrous for future wage growth for black and brown women. So disparities and the history of disparity adds upon layer upon layer of disparity. Dr. Holder, in your testimony, you mentioned prohibiting employers from requesting previous salary history as a possible, possible solution why would this be a good policy for women in Georgia and all across the country? Uh, thank you, Senator and Reverend Re uh, Warnick. It's a pleasure to answer a question for, from you on this issue. So the issue of uh, or uh, why um, prohibiting employers from requesting previous salary histories would contribute to narrowing the gender wage gap, let me explain it this way. We do know that there is a gender wage gap. We may disagree on what the contributing factors are. Um, but if you have two applicants for a job, one a, a man and one a woman, with very similar characteristics, similar educational attainment, similar work experience, similar, similar age, perhaps they are both parents, perhaps they are not. The, the issue is because of the gender wage gap, the likelihood that the female applicant's salary history will show a history of much lower earnings than the male applicant is simply why requesting previous salary histories has a disparate impact on female applicants for jobs. Women are simply, we, there, we have uh, we earn on average less than men. We know that. And so if you have two candidates that are similarly qualified, a man and a woman, and you look at their salary histories that they supply um, as requested, the likelihood is the female candidate will have a salary history that shows lower wages than the male applicant. So being underpaid rather than skill and experience becomes a basis for being underpaid and underpaid in the past, underpaid in the future. Ms. Kim, um, or, or Dr. Kim, I should say, uh, or Ms. Poo, either of you want to add to this? Thank you so much. Um, look, I, I agree with what Dr. Holder said. I do as well. Thank you, Senator. Thank, thank you very much. And, you know, we, we'll, we're all waiting with beta breath each month when these job numbers come out. But just to get the job numbers alone uh, doesn't tell the whole story. We, we should ask, what do these numbers look like for women? And are these jobs providing uh, equitable and livable wages for women? What do these numbers look like for women of color? And which is why yesterday I was deeply disappointed that uh, our colleagues on the other side uh, we're unwilling to even have a real debate about this, uh, about the wage gap and the Paycheck Fairness Act, uh, that we couldn't have an honest debate. I thought that's what we were here for about this issue. 
how to unleash an economy that is fair, transparent, and equitable. And so we've got to work together to do what we can to get equal pay in this country. I'm sorry, Ms. Dr. Kim. Yeah, I, I agree with you. And I only found out about that uh, vote at the beginning of this meeting. So, uh, but I do want to uh, say that transparency and accountability has shown um, to reduce the wage gap because employers look at their practices and make sure they're not discriminatory. So it, it would be a positive thing to have transparency and accountability. But thank you. Thank, thank all of you. Thank you for your work in this space. Thank you, Brother Chairman. Thank you, Senator Warnock, very much. I know yesterday's vote was disappointing, but it, it goes back to the, the the fundamentally anti-democratic character of the filibuster, which is not included in our constitution and never intended by our founding fathers and mothers.